thanks for coming. My name is Eddie Lin. I'll go over my background in a little bit more detail. We're doing this one with Rena Walzinger as well. I run a company called The Prep Source. I'm an industry guy. It's an online marketplace connecting students with mentors who have the job they want so they can get industry and company specific preparation from someone currently within that role. The purpose of this session is we're really just going to go through common interview mis um, <coughs> resume, cover letter, interview mistakes candidates often make and how to avoid them. Things have changed a lot. There are some caveats I would like to say is a lot of this is very it's subjective. There's a lot of different ways, a lot of different successful ways to do these things. I was just going to show you what has worked from my experience, what I've seen in terms of what different universities use. The goal also is to introduce you guys. A lot of people kind of do this, but the really big overarching goal here is what do the third party recruiters not tell you? What does university career services not tell you? So the problem that we're talking about here, part of the crisis, especially the four year universities, 60% um, of recent college graduates can't find a job here at $30,000 in debt. I think that trend is moving towards um, students joining the community college or general assemblies or lynda.com, self-learning. And <coughs> educational landscape among employers has changed a lot. It's less about, okay, I went to school and got this degree as in what can you do? That's why the percentage of people who haven't even gone to school, they're hiring people who dropped out of college, they'll hire them at Facebook or whatever because it's all about what you can code, what can you do, what do you bring to the table. So times have changed quite a bit. And the thing I really like about the community college curriculums that we talked about is they adapt faster than almost everything else. For your universities, there's an outrageous amount of bureaucracy where any sort of curriculum change takes forever. But here I've reviewed them through our meetings and whatnot. It just looks like <coughs> a lot of the trends are very current. Now, what do we do? <coughs> Go over my background, what recruiters look for, and what I was a recruiter, when I was a recruiter, what I looked for, common mistakes, a group exercise, and how to differentiate yourself as a candidate. Because look at all the students graduating from not only all the community colleges, but every university all over America and across the globe and how do you, as someone with very little work experience, separate yourself from your peers? Because the, I think the ratio of people applying for jobs is like 200 something to 1. And then um, we're going to talk about some brief interview strategies and go over some questions. <coughs> so what's worked for me in the past? All these companies I've either worked for, um, have gone, have interviewed with at least once, made the third round and failed, or interviewed on the first round and failed or some form of interview experience with all these places. These companies, um, since this is the ICT conference, we'll go with uh, what? Cisco, HP, uh, Ticketmaster, Texas Instruments. And then you would think that with my background, how do I also interview with British Petroleum, CBS, PwC, and Fear Factor, and Live Nation? What does this all have to do with each other? It's the same resume got jobs across all these different industries. So it's less about <coughs> all this academia, like what you take in and all this kind of stuff. It's a little overrated. If you spin yourself properly, you can get a job in investment banking, entertainment, <laughs> or any sort of tech thing. Sure, I mean, you have to embellish a little bit. But <coughs> I will say that if you make something up, you're eventually going to get caught in the interview. So if you're going to make something up, have some form of foundation of reality into it because you will have to defend it when the time comes. So I grew up in Texas, like I mentioned earlier. I learned how to two-step over winter break. It took me a long time to do that. I just never learned. I studied electrical engineering just for lack of I didn't know what I was going to do. I had friends who studied it. I did learn how to code then, which just kind of helped me down the road, even though I never really did it. It was a good thing to have. I had offer a UBS invest. A lot of, I've interviewed a lot of different places and a lot of different roles. I had about, coming out of undergrad, I had about 30 different interviews. Um, some I've gone far down the road and some I just failed right away. I learned a lot from those experiences. I'm going to share those with you. And <coughs> um, this is the reason why I think STEM is so important because a lot of those skills you learn in those STEM degrees, you can apply to everything else. And I did code as part of my first job and that's how I swung that whole first investment banking thing at UBS. And then I went to Goldman Sachs, which was part of the financial apocalypse. So I decided to stop doing that. And then I went to USC, 
So moved from New York all the way across the country, USC, where I was president of the MBA program there because I could drink more beer than everybody else. And so that's me. Um, no, on the resume, I think it says MBA class president, and then like footnote, drinks beer. <coughs> Adobe, um, I actually lived in San Jose for about three-ish months doing marketing at Adobe, even though, again, like, see all these careers that have nothing to do with each other is kind of the point. I sold myself to them as a marketer. And then why do we have fear? That was my MBA internship. And why do I have fear factor on here? I have a contestant where I ate 20 live bees in one minute. It was also dropped from a helicopter into a lake and had to swim to grab the flag. Because the interview process with Fear Factor is exactly the same as the interview process with Adobe, Goldman Sachs, UBS Investment Bank, and Live Nation Ticketmaster. So for Live Nation, I produced concerts with Room 5, One Republic, all that kind of stuff for private concerts. And that also has nothing to do with Adobe or Goldman Sachs or electrical engineering, but it kind of does at the same time. Taking the same core resume and spun it for all these different companies. So very doable. Okay, <clears throat> so I don't know if you guys read Quora, but it's a great forum to see what people talk about. In fact, Ambra Benjamin has 3,000 upvotes when this was presented in the forum, and she's a recruiter at Facebook, and this resonates with me very well. Um, before we go through the content, formatting is very, very important. So there is a format I use, I think it's called like Tommy Trojan now or something, but it's the same thing they use that almost all West Coast business schools are required to use it. So USC and UCLA for sure use the exact same one. You look at the University of Michigan, it's the same one. Columbia University is very, very similar too. <coughs> so you can avoid a lot of problems just by copying and pasting content in a prescribed format, which I can share with you later. But <coughs> common, common, like screw ups. Mixing the out first person and third person, present and past tense. There's a difference between developing developed and stuff like that to at least try to remain consistent whatever you choose. But I also, like Embra, I'm a big person into third person and past tense. It's pretty standard too. And objective statements. This has come up a lot. This is so 1992. Because objective statements more or less say, I really want your job. I really want this job. It really doesn't add a lot of value. They're usually worded kind of silly too. So don't put that. And then things, she said, things she rarely pays attention to. Education, like I said, it's more about what you did, your experience, and what you can bring to the table, and less about this is what uh, I have in terms of a piece of paper. So, and she also added, this is very heavy on the experienced uh, hire standpoint, but from campus recruiting, it's a little different because people don't have 10 years of work experience like we talked about at this morning's uh, keynote session. It's all about internships, side projects, leadership, and extracurriculars. So for internships, it doesn't matter. I mean, paid is always better. But unpaid is fine. And if you have zero work experience, get a job, any job. My first job was I was a cashier at CVS Pharmacy, Texas, getting paid minimum wage. And then after that, I was a tutor at the Texas Learning Center. Then I worked like an oil company. It's like whatever I could get my hands on, just take and figure out how to work it into something else. But you have to have experience. So take whatever you can get. If you can't get experience, create your own side projects. These days, it's easier to do side projects because anybody can code whatever they want. Create your own website. Create your own WordPress website. Whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do, just make the most of it and you can reference it for your work experience. Leadership is really important too because 75% of interviews these days coming out of school are behavioral. They're going to assume that you have that you can at least back up the technical knowledge you put on there because they want to work with someone they can hang out with. People recruit you at all the firms I worked at. They recruit you to be the CEO in 20 years. That's what they want you to do. When they ask you what do you want to do in five years, that's going to be the lead team. Um, for example, Texas Instruments, they have something called the TSA program, Technical Sales Associate. I interviewed with that. The CEO of TI came from that program. Everyone in that program should answer, I want to be the CEO eventually. <clears throat> Not every firm is this way though. Extracurriculars is another way to show that you're well-rounded. An example of that is one girl, she said martial arts is one of her activities, but she was actually a second degree black belt in Taekwondo. And you would never have pictured it. 
So someone who can surprise you, if you're outstanding any category and can differentiate yourself in any way, do it. And this is these four important things are very specific to recent college credits. So common mistakes, we'll go through this before going through the group exercise. Objective statements, never. No, two pages, absolutely not. I know people debate this two page thing all the time, but even if you have 10 years of experience, you can cut it down to one page. You'll see it really is that easy. Like when I was a hiring manager at Live Nation, I would find any excuse. I had 3,000 uh, submissions into my box that HR wanted me to weed through right away. It was either between that or going to the bar. So I would find any reason possible, any reason, because all the resumes and things are so competitive, so close, find any reason like, oh, poor font, poor spacing, uh, two pages, delete, delete, delete. So any reason, it has to be absolutely perfect at least. And then there's all these weak words that oh, people talk about accomplishments instead of through stories. A very, very common one is I know how to use Microsoft Word, Excel, and Outlook. Show them how you use Excel because if you can say I use a pivot table, that's one of the more sophisticated Excel functions that people use. I use a pivot table to analyze such and such data set to do so and so. So I use um, pivot table to analyze market data to help Adobe increase its sales by such and such. Like that is much more powerful than I use Microsoft Excel because everybody puts down I use Microsoft Excel. And worked on is pretty weak. You don't want to put words that say I worked on a team by sat there and watched other people do work. You want to be the leader. So you can say develop, create, design is more trendy and Develop, is a, especially in ICT, because you know coding is developing, so you want to kind of suggest. Assisted is also another weak word that says I did nothing. I watched, I drank coffee while other people did work. Um, so you don't want to do that. You want to say you led a team. It's important to say that you can recruit, you can develop a team, and if you didn't in school projects, you can kind of say that you did. And it's, I know this is being recorded, but just kind of, you can create that even if you didn't. And you can defend it. Make sure everything you put on your resume is defensible. I'm not going to say make stuff up. Okay. <clears throat> and you see these generic things on resumes like HTML. At least put HTML5. But everybody knows what HTML is. So put something harder on there. CSS. Yeah, people kind of know what cascading style sheets are. Put something harder. We put down JavaScript. Don't just put down JavaScript. There's so many frameworks these days. Uh, and there's like Node.js, AngularJS, and like Bootstrap, like Twitter Bootstrap. I think I saw it in this uh, keynote session where they're trying to have middle schoolers use like Twitter Bootstrap these days, which is crazy. But anyway, you should put that kind of stuff instead of CSS because people are taking it to another level. Again, that goes back to using these technologies within the context of something that's actually useful because everybody who can just walk through Barnes & Noble can pull down JavaScript. Passive voice is easy. M is our was where be being Ben. Even when I write like cover letters or papers, anytime get yeah, rid of that, which can get you in trouble. So I just tend to get those and uh, rid of that in general. But like I said, list of what was accomplished. This is a general format Google recruiters talk about a lot too. Increase revenue percentage, save X hours, automated some manual process. When it comes to kids, they aren't really have an opportunity to save revenue or create some special project. So at the level you're at, you just say, I did something resulting in something, hopefully that's better. So at least start with that. And then formatting, uh, it's ironic when people say they're proficient in Word and it's very clear that they don't even know how to use Word. That happens a lot too. Um, <coughs> center just by tap box, blah, blah, blah. Demonstrating initiative is really important too. Again, it's a leadership quality that's really important. So instead of saying I completed this assignment because I was told to, it says I identified something that was wrong and I took it upon myself as an initiative to fix it. That says a lot more of what they're going to do for your company instead of saying I'm the person who takes orders. I'm the person that I don't have to watch. He can work autonomously and fix my whole company. I don't have to do anything. And like I said, demonstrate that you can find your own team and, um, and do and create on your own. So how important are cover letters? This is very conflicting here, different stuff. Some people say, oh, they do absolutely nothing. I can't wait to not read any of them. Or some people say, um, people like me are big fans of cover letters. The job market is so competitive these days. Why don't you do everything you possibly can to get that offer? So I did everything. I, my entertainment job, 
I got through a very well written cover letter because I have no experience in entertainment and all that kind of stuff. I was able to pull that off through a well worded cover letter. So I give myself every chance to succeed because it shows you a passion about the position. Someone who has passion about the industry and position within about three months can overcome someone who has the knowledge from that industry and background. It doesn't care. So hire someone with passion and who's eager to learn. Someone who's smart and eager to learn can overtake someone who's been doing the job for 10 years. I've seen it many, many times. So cover letters, critical to me, but this is a very important caveat. Do not write a generic cover letter or you actually does the complete opposite. You will get disqualified immediately because I can tell all you're doing is substituting the company name. It has to be very specific to the position. It has to be very specific to the company and has to tie in your skills and abilities directly for that position. And no, people put bullet points on cover letters. That's what your resume is for. It's redundant. Your, your cover letter is your opportunity to show yourself off as a writer. Show your character as a personality. That is what a key part that can, a cover letter can add that your resume does not. So with that, let's take a look at the packets I've distributed. The first one is Jill Smith. This is a, all of these are real cover letters and resumes by students who've submitted to me or through my system or whatever. So let's just take three minutes, because remember, like, well, one of these um, is, uh, is interesting because Amber Benjamin, the Facebook recruiter, says that she spends about 30 seconds doing this. I probably spend about 30 seconds or less doing what this. Doing just to go through a cover, like a resume, and say this is worth it or this isn't worth it. So let's take six times that and do like three minutes. Let's see what we can come up with three minutes. And like I said, everyone has a different take on it, so we can all talk about it. But we can compare what you guys changed in the next three minutes to what I did, and then we can talk about it. Let's take three minutes. Jill Smith. You want to edit these. Edit these. Yes, make them better. What do you see that's wrong? What do you suggest that's fixed? And then we'll take three minutes to do this, and then five minutes we can do a discussion and then move on to the next one.
All right. <clears throat> awesome. Everybody feel good about what we went through? All right. So who, okay, what's the first thing that strikes you right away that's messed up? Well, well the, at the very top. The well, okay, because you said no, don't burn objections. Exactly. But so what I thought was most kind of disappointing about this is they put all the interesting stuff at the bottom. Yeah. Because all this stuff, exactly right. Like the skill section, yeah. you have a skill section can be deleted right away, adds no value. It's absolutely right. Also notice on two pages, like have you ever seen anyone walk around the office with like a stapled resume it's just, <laughs> that you rarely ever just go ahead. If the one skill that is of value, then I wouldn't cross off this list. It's fluent in English and Spanish. Yes. Um, so there is. Else. Right. Exactly. At the bottom, um, I could show you another. The format that they use, I was talking about at most West Coast schools, like at the business schools at like USC, UCLA, is there's an additional information section. It's very important to speak additional languages these days. English, Spanish is a very, very good one. Um, that should go under there. And the thing about, um, someone said something about semicolons, right? I didn't. Oh, okay. Well, <clears throat> semicolons. First of all, if you're going to do any punctuation at the end of these bullets, you be consistent, right? Yeah. But I actually just hate them in general. But some people put periods at the end of them, like why? These aren't meant to be sentences anyway. But some people put periods, but it's just I'm not a fan. Semicolons I've never seen, so that's just kind of crazy too. Uh, what else? What else do you guys see? Subjective. It's a, it's a strong line skills. Proficient that's sort of subjective. Exactly. How does this actually show that someone is skilled? Yeah, it means nothing. That's why concepts and symbols. Well, yes, Dan. Context is important. Dan? Yeah, I'm not liking the right justification on the uh, date. Exactly. In fact, if you, you guys don't have the word version open, but it's not even like, if you guys know what those tab stops are in the ruler? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 You click on the tab stop and hit tab. The reason why they're not aligned at all is because she didn't use tab stops. They don't know how to do it, which is no, ironic. Exactly. You know, they hit spaces a bunch of times. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, you should have. No, they don't need them because they're all different years. Or it depends, like, if it's like within a summer, you could say yeah. summer, or if it's like a month. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. This, this might also be real old school from my age. Uh, on, on something that's the body text, you don't want to use time Sarah. Um, probably not. I mean, there's the, the template does not also. So that it's pretty standard as well. That's that's a very valid point too. And it is. Yeah. That's why she should have gone with the Beverly B. Tommy Trojan format. Yeah. I would argue that for young people who are in their first couple of jobs and just have internships or just short jobs. They absolutely need to put the dates because they have to show. Yes, you definitely have to have the dates because you work there for three months, three years. Right. But there's and ways to but, format the dates. But, yeah. yeah. And the other, but, so that's, you know, not putting dates. But the other thing I would say, so I would argue for that, but I would also say that that shows, even if you don't have a job, I mean, this person does have some, some um, industry experience, but if all you've ever done is work as a barista at Starbucks or whatever it was, that also shows that you know how the longevity in a job, you know how to keep. You know, right. if you work there for two years, so it's, it's relevant to put it on in any case. Exactly. And that actually is the two examples coming up. Courtney Kardashian has a similar situation. That's on there. Yeah. Uh, longevity. How important is that to you? You know, in the past, longevity was a big deal. But yeah. today, People switch on average jobs like every two years now, so it's so kind of understandable. You know, you should hold, no one's going to hold that against you. It's more like a plus that you actually work somewhere at a long time and can actually hold the job. But I think it's kind of understandable when like younger people these days are like, oh, you left in like two years. But if it's under a year, something weird is going on. It should be at least a year. Two is almost the bare minimum when I was going through the ranks. But I've seen it be less than that now. Yeah, that's pretty. You'll see that later too. With professional experience, she ranked it by date. But it really, the second two are more important than the first two. Well, they you should. Read. Recruiters are looking chronologically, though. So like, you would read the right, because it's like the evolution of your career. Like, why did you move to where you did, and like, what's the story? You're like trying to tell a story. Okay. Some HR people are, are uh, suspicious of non, non, you know, not my date, and you Well, it doesn't like you're trying to. Well, for me, if you look at like my evolution, my career is like okay. Let's see, if I rearrange the banking things, it would look like why did he leave and come back and all that kind of stuff. And then Whereas, yeah, the skills section? Yes. So 
something you never have? I never have the skills section because you always embed it within your example. Yeah. Always, always, always. Because, yeah. Summary? The summary, yeah, I don't put summaries at all. It's another thing, the waste space that you can put within the examples. You'd be more concise about it and it's much more powerful. The summary is something that really just doesn't add a lot of value. No, no, there's an additional info section that usually people look for. It's at the bottom. And um, also this is, I don't know if you can tell right off, but this is also center justified, which is annoying to read as well. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah left justify everything. And then the spacing on the second page is even weird. And then the hobbies, I mean, sports, traveling, and cooking, most people do that to some degree. Like, uh, come on, bowl bowling is sports, but they could have a very cool one, like the second degree Taekwondo black belt. She, every time I've worked with someone, somebody always has a cool hobby. They just don't tell you what it is. There was a girl who, she would stand in line for like 12 hours to buy Disney pins of like Winnie the Pooh or whatever, and then resell them on eBay for like 10 times the amount. That's great. If you're a banker, it'd be like, hey, she knows how to buy low, sell high. You know, she can make money off that thing. There's ways to sell that. And she's willing to put in the hard work. She has a lot of patience. There's a lot of ways to put that. It's a lot better than just putting, uh, everybody travels too. If you list it, if you travel a lot, you should list where you go and why and all that kind of stuff. Excellent student leader. You can rename the award if it doesn't sound good. Yeah. So you can. Well, within some level of reason. I was thinking about how bad it is. It's just everything on the left. On the, yeah. on the left. I uh, use two column tables, you know, you have the heading on the left. The actual, it comes up like that. So I've, I've done the preparation and this, they look this as much as this. Yeah. When I put it in the two columns, it's shortened. Yeah, I mean, you're yeah. almost embedding like a spreadsheet within the Word doc, right? It comes up shorter. If, so you just, way to shorten. if you copy and paste into the other format, it sorts it out really well. It's like super easy. Just tab stops will do a lot for it. There's some other stuff we can get into, but there's a whole bunch of like, I'll just walk through the words that are really weak too, like um, attended means I just showed up and fell asleep in the back row. Um, Cross-functional is a good word. Responsible for means that this was my normal job but I didn't do anything useful out of it. I mean, this is a subtle but very important kind of, like this is my responsibility whereas this is my accomplishment. This is a very different mentality. Assisted, like I said, assisted is I watched somebody do work while I didn't do anything. Um, this is all very detailed but it's a very competitive market so you got to be the best. Negotiated is a much more stronger word. Partnered with, there's a lot of other stuff. Okay, so now we can go to the next one. Um, Paul E. Smith. This is an interesting one too because ironically, this Paul E. Smith guy actually worked at Robert Half. But yeah, you'll see how interesting his resume is. So let's take three minutes to go through Paul E. Smith. Or sooner if you guys want. I will see two minutes on this one. Oh, just one quick note on this. Every resume should be highly tailored to the position. So if you've been working somewhere for eight years, you could pull stuff from different parts and delete even like a whole year of your life because it's not relevant to this position because you want to be concise and relevant as possible. And so these were kind of targeted towards different things and uh, Jill Smith was applying for I think a supply chain technology position. So they tailor you need to, like the position I left out of this. But that definitely needs to be a big consideration. What position was Paul applying for? He was applying for like an account management. Actually, he was the least focused of all of the people. He was like, I kind of want to just change jobs. But it was, um, yeah, he wasn't, I think it was like account exec or something, which is essentially sales. And the thing I don't like about recruiters nothing against them. They do help us get This is one thing I really disagree with in the keynote is that people like Robert Half, they do a good service, but yeah, I've worked with uh, agencies like them before, but what they like to do is they get paid on placing a candidate. So they almost, you can't place someone who has no work experience. So it doesn't apply to any of the students out there. They usually take people with three or four years of work experience and match up the exact resume to the job description, shove it in the employer's face and say, look, I found the right guy for it exact same thing and then they get their commission and they move on. So they really can't help students because you're showing them I like to steal Disney pins and sell them ten times higher which says a lot about a person actually really good attributes. Robert Half isn't going to make any money off that. So that's why I caution people on relying on Robert Half in this situation. And also career transitioners, I would not rely on Robert Half for that either. 
well, the way to get through those is they do a lot of tech to iron out, so they there'll be a chance to fill up some of the qualification things. Yeah, it's hard though because when you have coming out of school, you don't really have any real. Teachers also get a lot of education. Push them for the ones who have enough education. You could try, but <coughs> it's really, really tough. You have no experience. Okay, let's go at the top real quick. What do you guys see at the top? Yeah, the summary. Like, what is it? The summary you can read through the resume yourself. Like, it tells a better story instead of saying, "Oh, I was a business developer." Yes, yes. Oh, I obscured his phone number. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad I did that. Otherwise, you'd call and say, what's wrong with your original? I know when it's a numerical order, but you would think. I've had people get the wrong phone number. People misspell email addresses, too. I mean, I should hope that they don't do that, but that's been done. So the summary, I mean, it just doesn't add a lot of value because, like I said, the Facebook lady, myself, we looked through this in 30 seconds. We can derive your story a lot better than your, like, one sentence that's kind of difficult to read. I'd get rid of time and bullets. Yes, exactly right. What it doesn't make you innovative to use non-standard bullets. It just makes you kind of weird, and it's kind of annoying to look at. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm being right. What's uh, and, and cost are, are, are those titles? We yeah. have <laughs> no idea. Where is that? Um, <laughs> two years or is it? <laughs> oh right, you're supposed to explain these things. I have no idea what this is. This is what he really put. Like, uh, what he needs to put down in another format I could show you is like, if, first of all, he should bold the company and then like type in his role and then put a one sentence description of this company because you can't assume everybody is familiar with your company. Even if it's like one of the largest companies in the world, not everybody knows everything, especially if he's trying to transition careers. Also, the date, instead of putting all those numbers, typically Feb 2014, for like month, they write abbreviated like like date like M A R for March or stuff like that, and it's not business developer; it's business development. It's what would go under business card. And italics in a lot of those places. Ah, well, it shouldn't be there. And he, I don't think he knows how to use tab stuff either. And like that's why this format doesn't work because Washington D C and the dates are all just jammed in there. Some of the Writing is just kind of inconsequential. Flown to Sacramento to tour a facility. Yeah, exactly. What what does that mean? That, I have that on here as well. Okay, you flew to Sacramento to a facility. Like, what does that mean? Are you good? Did you did you get punished and they send you there? Cause, like, I don't get it. Like, I don't know if it's good or bad. I don't know. But he, there's no context. If he said I was the they sent me to Sacramento to develop an entire team and create a new facility, that's a big deal. But the fact that I got on an airplane went somewhere doesn't say a lot. Um, you could, it, it depends what he's applying for because what's interesting is it's two full pages, right? But if you look at, delete all the stuff that doesn't matter, this could easily fit on one. I, I, it depends. Yeah, there's a way to format it too, and he just stopped trying towards the end, as you can kind of tell. That's a lot. That's a job that they did that isn't relevant to the current position. It depends because, like, people within my career range of like 10 years in industry, like my first job, even though I spent three years in it, only has like one bullet point now. And then I rephrase it because that's the most relevant to what I'm applying for in entertainment. Like, what is my first investment banking job? I'm paying these things. But it exists. So cool. I leave it there just to know that I did it. And one bullet point just to give you a sense. Like, bare minimum requirement. This guy is writing about stuff that doesn't even matter. Yeah. Like flying to Sacramento. I like Sacramento. Don't get me wrong. And, and yeah. order that you would usually do experience education at the bottom. Oh, well, here's the thing. Experienced people, like we're talking about this morning, 10 years of experience trumps all, right? So that's why they put their education at the bottom. But when you just come out of school, you put the education at the top because that's all you really have. The rest of it is kind of a stretch anyway. And tense, you can see that tense is wrong. He has selling instead of like sold or whatever. And it's inconsistent in general. And like you said, the nutraceutical, cosmeceutical, like you can't write stuff like that. You should 
you, that's so industry specific. Create an initial target list. You could just say create target list. That's like saying you didn't even. What's the point? Like I was not even the lead contact in here. And then you can't use words that like hot lead, like American colloquialisms. Do not put that. Even if you put awesome leads, at least that is correct. Like hot, it just. And this guy is Robert Half. He's got 20. And what's interesting is he says he has 10 years of database development, which is kind of relevant for anything, but it's not really on here. And look, he gets so lazy on city council for Washington, D.C. He took aid. One bullet point would have been nice. What is an aid? Did he get coffee? System analyst and web programmer, what did he program? That's kind of important too. Independent, the word there is freelance. And is there computer skills? And yeah, like what is this? Like he lists like things that are a little outdated here. Like why put in like MySQL, MS SQL? You could just put down SQL, MS Access. Why would you use that instead of like you know Oracle, MongoDB? There's like newer things out here. And if he doesn't know what the newer things are, just Google it really quick and put it on there. You could go watch Lynda.com for like five minutes and learn some of these skills and put it on your resume. It was like my my neighbor's uh, boyfriend was a law student at USC and he under activities he put a uh, personal interest micro brewing beer. And he put submitted that to the job and then went to the brewery store and bought that. So it's become his new hobby. So you can kind of stretch it that way. But so you can kind of learn stuff on the fly and add it to it. Yes. I think he just failed to address this well. Like you longevity, like back in those days, since this is like two thousand, they expect like a longer we talked about their longevity these days. It's very possible. I mean, your the idea is to show career progression and advancement, like tell a story. Like if you're in the same industry, you should have like more responsibility. Or if you switch industry, it should have some. It's all about telling the right story, and they can interpret that really fast. Yeah. LinkedIn. Yeah, delete that. People no, people don't expect that on there too. It just takes up space, and and then he even put what LinkedIn is, which is just doesn't make any sense. And fundraiser for Colon Cancer Alliance, that's an event. That's not what he did. Was he like the chairperson? Was he the guy who actually raised the money? DuPont Circle Business Networking International, like some of these he could put, there's different ways to phrase this. Like Microsoft Visio, Visio, you could say use Visio to diagram project to create business requirements to streamline project flow resulting in some develop, working with the developers to do so and so in such language. That's one way to put Visio and say he just puts Microsoft Visio. And he also puts down Microsoft Project, which nobody uses, when he could just say like five other industry standards. So at least look those up, learn them in five minutes, pretend you use Basecamp or something else. Yeah. Just like the rest of the he's abandoning a perfectly good job. He doesn't he doesn't explain why he wants why he wants to abandon a perfectly good job. Well, the cover letter could cover that, tell the story. But I mean the thing is if he's switching to a similar position. Yeah. Maybe we can infer that, hey, they just want to work at this company. Cover letter can say a lot too. Okay. Um, and sometimes the thing is they're like, oh, I submitted my online application. Okay, if you had to guess how this guy applied for 75 jobs, if you had to guess how many interviews he got, uh, I, like when I last spoke with him. Three. Zero is correct. O for 75. Robert Half Guy for six months. Who would have thought, right? And he didn't he guess it might be a problem with his resume? Uh, he said, yeah, I don't think he realized it. And see, <laughs> self-awareness is really important here. There's a lot of things wrong with this. There's a lot of things. And he does not use hyphens either, if you've noticed. He uses like, so not having a command of the English language, like some words, there's all over the place that he should use hyphens and some he does and he shouldn't. And it's very sloppy. He has two spaces. Like I can even tell when reading a resume when someone has two spaces instead of one. Like, did you even try when you did this? Um, there's a lot of detail that could go in here too, um, but like, why? Uh, like, why bother? Um, yeah. Something you didn't really address mm -hmm. um, that students think, and I think they're right, is that um, uh, a resume coming to a contact rather than just like a 
Yeah. The email is going to get you on the top of the It's a guaranteed read. So networking is actually the most important thing. It's just really hard. So one thing is if you have a friend of a friend, you're very lucky. Or if you have a family friend's friend, you're even luckier. I never really had that. I did do things the old-fashioned slash hard way. So I have to track down the person who did this. And when I was at Live Nation, whoever sent me, if a friend or any employee I didn't even know, sent me a resume that came from something, I was like obliged to read it. I was like, oh, all right, let's see. Okay. I would. And then sometimes I'd even be like required to interview the person even if I didn't want to. If it was like some very senior person's like daughter's friend's sister or something, I was like, all right, bring him in, even though I know it's not going to go well. Like, that is very important. Or if you're like me and you just started out and moved to LA, you want to join the music industry but have no connections, I submitted to Universal Music online. I have no idea who's going to read that. And then I looked up on LinkedIn who the recruiter was for that position, and I just looked up the main number for Universal Music and just called and asked for that person or someone else who was recruiting for this position. They said, oh, I'll tell you who it is if you don't use my name. I was like, I'm done just fine. I'm good with that. And then I eventually reached the right person. They said, you know, I really appreciate your initiative. Um, this is what we're looking for in this type of industry. Let's set up a time to interview the person. And the interview went, went very well. I didn't get the position, but you know, that's how this thing is. It's all a numbers game. If you get the position, it's fine. You learn from it and move on. So it's not a big deal. You can't get down on yourself. Oops. We have five minutes. All right. So we got a lot of stuff. I'm sorry we didn't get the cover. Kim Kardashian was next and a cover letter. Um, Real quick, if we just go to Kim Kardashian, just go real quick now that you've learned all this stuff. What does it see? Like, name three things really quick that should be right away. You should know that's wrong about this thing. Related coursework is just the curriculum. It's not even related to anything. Move experience. Move experience. You see, that's the thing. If you read this carefully, that's not even her experience. That's her, just her courses. She's trying to pass off her student thing as being an actual engineer. She shouldn't put that at the top. Notice how the spacing is ridiculous. It's all the way to the right. First of all, she has two pages. And this goes back to the question earlier. T-Mobile Assistant Store Manager. Very helpful, actually. But to get it on one page, she could uh, put this down as two bullets. She led team of profits from 11K to 22K. Very important. That's the uh, outstanding leadership in sales. Um, perform troubleshooting is too short. She has stuff. The T-Mobile thing, if you're coming out of school, is very important. It was like my... Like CVS Pharmacy shows that I, in theory, that I was good at customer service. And that says a lot. At that age, it says a lot when you're 20 and 21. Um, yeah, and she also separates her two degrees into one degree into two, as if I wouldn't notice. Like, I study electrical engineering, so separating electrical and computer engineering into two things when it's like first bullet on the second page. Optimize a modern, exactly. How do you optimize an alarm clock? Doesn't make any sense. And with C++? And what is Arduino? I don't even know. Like a lot of this doesn't make any sense. By reading this, if you read it carefully, you could tell that she doesn't actually know. Exactly. Exactly. There's all kinds of things wrong with this. At least you use Eclipse, so it's always nice to use industry standard stuff. And if she said how she used Python, like I use Python to often for analyzing big data to identify certain patterns in a data set resulting in something for like, uh, like that would interest something in IBM. Use a scripting language to pull blah, blah, blah information to infer something about such and such industry. Instead, she just puts down the word Python. Like really, like what does that even mean? Anyone with a dictionary could just write down technical knowledge. So are we out of time? Two minutes. Oh, cover letter. Okay, let's go last one real quick. So this is, I am writing to apply for executives. Like, this is, like, obviously you're applying for this position, so why even bother mentioning it? Um, uh, this is exciting to me, like, obviously. You should say, like, very first thing is a very powerful sentence that ties in your work experience um, with that. She could say, I view everything as a sale. Like, everything in my life, even if she's never done sales, talk about her passion for sales. Thesis statement. Then next thing kind of supports it. Very short first paragraph. Third paragraph. And then the next two paragraphs, the first sentence, supports the thesis statement. And then in the body of the uh, second and third paragraph, should have supporting statements to support the first sentence of that paragraph. So you have thesis statement, and then uh, supporting statement, supporting statement, and a little fluffy stuff in the middle that supports the supporting statements. And the last one kind of closes it out. Got to be a little stronger with the end instead of saying, thank you in advance for your thoughtful consideration. Come on. 
It's like, I look forward to speaking soon or something like that. Signature is a nice touch. I kind of like, like that. Um, it shows that you try a little harder format could use some work. Any other questions before we get done with this thing? Signature, yes. Um, that's not, I use the original signature of the original person because I figured no one would be able to recognize it anyway. Yeah. I mean, they'll ask for it if they're looking for it. Okay. Usually when they get down to the offer stage, I mean, it's assumed that like references are available in request. If they want to give you an offer, they'll ask you for okay. references. Sometimes they don't. Okay. Yeah. Just as uh, concise as possible. Yes. How about the perspective that everybody's hired you to be a problem solver? You can show that within the context of your thing. Yeah. Okay. So you can embed that through the, as a theme throughout the resume. Exactly. You should always be trying to solve problems, process improvement, and analytical ability. And analytical ability doesn't mean you have to be good at math. That could just, that is a problem solver. Like, I optimize an alarm clock. I'm sure there's a way you could phrase that to make it look like you're a problem solver. You said the alarm clock broke and I found a way to fix it. Like that's itself a problem solver. And you can be any major to do that, not even STEM. 